As you can imagine, I'm a bit out of my comfort zone. This is not what I'm used to. Um, right. If I press the wrong button, I apologise. I'm perfectly good with drips and other things, so you're safe if you ever come to Grantham. <laughs> That's it. That is the board that they've been talking about. It's basically a paper template covered with a piece of perspex. It sounds very grand in all the build-up to it, and then when you see it, it could be seen as a little bit of a letdown, but I can tell you, it's brilliant. It's so simple, it's actually embarrassing that we hadn't caught on for using an idea like this before. Along the top, you have the dates. Down the side at the far end, you have the names of the patient. We only put surnames. Um, it is in a room away from the main patient area, so confidentiality, confidentiality is maintained. And then, as you can see, you have a white and a grey strip for each patient. The white area is where we do the plan, and the grey area is where we do the check. And down this far side, you have larger boxes in which we can write background information, things that's going to be really useful for anybody coming in and having a look. It's not my board, it isn't Zoe's board, it's the ward's board, and it's multidisciplinary. We use different coloured inks for different specialities. Physiotherapists and occupational therapists particularly get involved. We are, I admit, still struggling slightly to get the medics on side, but um, we'll beat them down in the end. I won't let them write on it, though, because their writing's always appalling. <laughs> I'm sorry to any doctors present, but it's true. Um, the joy of this, not that you can see clearly, but the absolute joy is it's completely visual. So anybody walking in and looking at that board, if I've been on annual leave for two weeks, I can come back, I can walk into that, have a look at the board. I don't know the patients in depth, I don't necessarily know exactly what's wrong with them, but I do instantly know that for the 24 hours in front of me, what I'm supposed to be doing and that gives you a head start. You catch up on the rest as you have the time. But it's very clear. It's user-friendly. It's a whiteboard pen. If you write a code and it's wrong, you wipe it off. It's not critical. And it just helps because it takes away the shroud of mystery that so far covers patient planning. When plans are written in notes, people don't see them. When they're written in undecipherable handwriting in notes, people can't read them. This, the mystery is gone. It's laid bare. It's there for all to see and everybody to follow. The actual planning tool is, this is a close-up of it. It's very simple. You've got Mr. Smith at the end. The black dot represents when he arrives on the ward. The coded messages not rocket science, CXR is chest x-ray, ECG is a cardiac recording, B um, is bloods, risk assessment, well, I think anybody can work out what that is. So you put your plan of what's going to happen, what's expected, anticipated to occur each day. The black diamond is a decision point, and in this case, it's where you're actually going to review the IV antibiotics that the patient's on, and you also want the consultant to review the patient. On Thursday, we're going to plan for this patient's discharge. The planned date of discharge is represented by the green triangle. It's not written in stone. It still frightens nurses to death that they put a green triangle and somehow they're going to be held accountable for it. They're not, but it gives you a focus point. And it makes sure that you can rally doctors around to try to get the discharge ready the day before. That, by the way, never happens. But it's always a good plan. That's the plan, which is fine. Plans are great, but you've actually got to check them. There's no point, we could all plan ad infinitum, but if you're not checking what your planning is being done, you're going to fail. So what we did, Zoe and I agreed, we would link our checking of these plans to one major handover that we have. We do various handovers during the day, but our major lunchtime handover is when you've got two of the main staff sets coming in. And you go through. So on Monday, Mr. Smith was meant to have had bloods, chest x-ray, ECG. 
Now also, he should have had his risk assessments done. But as you can see, in the actual, they weren't achieved. So you carry it forward to Tuesday in red. It's highlighted, it's very visual, it's very clear. Everybody can see it. And despite what you may read on the front cover of the Daily Mail, nurses really do not like to fail at anything. So to have something in red on a board which says you didn't achieve what you should have done the day before really does motivate to make sure it gets done. You carry on through your plan. The specifics doesn't really matter, except when you come to Thursday. Now, on Thursday, as you can see, that was our predicted date of discharge. The discharge letter and the drugs weren't actually done as they should have been done on the Wednesday. They were only done on the Thursday, and the transport wasn't booked. So, oh dear, we failed in our discharge date because the patient didn't leave until Friday because the transport hadn't been booked and arranged on the right time. That highlights the delay. From this board, you can actually start to look at the issues. What is causing a holdup in the patient's journey? Why did that happen? It's not apportioning blame. It's actually finding what is causing any delay and highlighting it. And from this, we have another piece of paper. It's only a sheet of A4 that we call the issues. And we just write down. So if we have anything on in red, that's causing a delay to the patient getting what they need in time and in full, we write it on the issues board. And then that way, the ward manager can actually highlight what's going on and deal with it accordingly. These were the delays. Some of the things are things that we do have control over, but less control, external delays, transfers to play other hospitals, such as Glenfield, equipment delivery, um, but an awful lot of the things are actually internal things that we can deal with. These are highlighted and clear. In most cases, the ward can actually, through support, teaching, and adjustment of, pra adjustment of practice, deal with a great deal of these. But in other cases, some of them are beyond our control. There's nothing I can do about getting a patient to Glenfield if Glenfield say they're full. That's out of my control, out of my remit. But I do know that now these issues are being collated in this way, it's being highlighted to somebody more significant and more influential than I am, who perhaps can deal with them more effectively. Nurses like to know that they're being heard. It's no different than any workforce anywhere else. We like to know that when we're moaning about something, somebody's actually listening. And generally, we do moan quite constructively and very loudly, and now it's being written down and people are taking note of it. So the learning. To get plan for every patient in, uh, Zoe said that I made it um, basically non-negotiable. Yeah, I did. Because if I'd given them a choice when we first put the board up, or you can fill it in if you want to, <laughs> no, it wouldn't have been done. So I'm afraid I did put, lay the law down. So it's got to be done. But I let them work through it. We let the staff realise how it could help them. We became more relaxed about the codes. People wrote things. Sometimes I would go in afterwards and just tidy the board up. It wasn't always neat, it wasn't always tidy but they used it and they could see. But it did take a firm guiding leadership and it continues to need somebody to take control and be accountable for it. Validity, it had to be valid. People had to realize that this thing was there for a purpose. The NHS, like an awful lot of organizations, are in a state of constant change at the moment. We are being asked to leap through so many hoops, we basically feel more like circus performance than nurses half the time. We just don't know which way we're supposed to turn. So to introduce a new tool, for the nurses to actually take it on board and use it, for the other professions to use it, we had to make it valid. Commitment, we need a commitment from me as the leader on the ward, from my boss, we need a commitment from the team here, and we need commitment from our, from our matrons and from our senior managers. So that is really important to re make people realize it's not a flash in the pan. It's staying and it will develop and work. 
and benefits, yet, yeah, like I've said, we're human, we like a benefit on the side, like anybody else, and trying to get surgery back on a ward that was purely surgical is the way to do it for us. 20 pound notes work as well, by the way, so if anybody <laughs> wants any. The question that's gone all the way through here is length of stay reduction. Did we achieve a length of stay reduction? Oh yes, we did. <laughs> I can't explain the graph to you properly because I'm not a graphy person. I know the broken blue line by the number two, that side of it is before plan for every patient, and when the blobs nearly hit ground zero, this side is after plan for every patient for a period of time. We didn't just achieve it as a flash in the pan, we've achieved it consistently. It does work, and it works from somebody who is one of those busy people. So, yeah, we're really pleased. But I think the question is now, yes, it worked, and it's worked for a period of time, but can it continue to work?